Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Mr. Sensible and today I have a well-known name, Mr. Nathan Roberts. And today we're going to be discussing his clothing. Take it away, Nathan. Not your clothing. No, no, just, just the movie. Yeah. Hey guys, how you doing? This should hopefully be a fairly brief message. Excellent, Nathan. Thank you very much. So until next, oh, you got you got some more to say. Oh, go on then. Just wanted to share with you uh, some interactions I had this evening, all because I was simply wearing my T-shirt. My goodness, and I can't see any black eyes or cuts or anything. Are you okay? Bible says flat Earth, so I'm at the convenience store. Okay, and I like root beer, so I got a root beer. You little rascal. And um, I was, was going up to the checkout counter, and right before I got there, a guy who had uh, some scratch-off tickets was ahead of me. So he completed his transaction. He stepped away. He looked at my shirt, and he said, Don't you come near my kids. I've been saying a lot about, you know, biblical cosmology or flat earth or Bible says flat earth. And he said, so I, I talked with my friend about it, and, um... He's no longer my friend. Actually, before he did that, I apologize. First, he asked me, where does it say it in the Bible? So I said, well, it doesn't actually say, um, in any of the newer versions, Flat Earth anywhere. However, it does in the Matthews 1537 edition from when, uh, William Tyndale. Great. So let's cherry pick the version we want. He wrote it in 2 Samuel 11, 11, flat earth, the words flat earth. You do realize that this is just a translation. And, uh, but aside from that, it's all throughout the Bible. Uh, the firmament especially is one of the biggest proofs. Proofs? I don't think you can consider some stories from Bronze Age sheep herders to be proof. Well, maybe you could, but reasonable people wouldn't. A firmament, only the firmament, only fits over a flat plane. It doesn't fit on a spinning ball. Well, if you're going to believe this guff, why couldn't it look like this? Seems quite reasonable. And um, so we, we talked about flat earth and biblical cosmology, and this is right in front of the cashier. Who tried to trip the panic alarm. And so she was listening very intently as well. And backing off very carefully. And so before he left... I handed him a card, and so he might even watch this video. With his mates drinking beer and rolling around on the floor laughing their asses off. It's kind of neat. Um, I had no clue that I would get that kind of reaction um, or response. Or armed response. You should be careful. But he was very inquisitive, so he left. Very quickly. And then I carried on my conversation with... Some poor sap who found himself trapped in the corner. Uh, so uh, someone asked the Matthews 1537 edition, what verse? It's uh, 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 11. Um, okay, so anyways, uh, the cashier. So she was very intrigued by this, this uh, topic of biblical cosmology. So, sorry, um, I was intrigued with some fluff I just found in my belly button. So I went ahead and um, gave her a little bit more information on it. I told her that I've written a book about it, that I'm going to be speaking at a conference, Skyfall. And a bystander quickly started CPR. Uh, 2019, that's going to be at Auburn, Alabama. If you haven't yet registered, please go do that. Uh, Skyfall2019.org. And um, so she seemed really interested because apparently her husband, bef well, before she got into the Bible, which was kind of recent for her in the last few months, she was into Hinduism and Buddhism and uh, just kind of doing her own thing. Like learning ninja self-defense techniques against odd people. And so she said that since her husband has um, kind of guided her and shown her stuff in the Bible and also with the Nephilim in Genesis chapter 6, uh, she was, uh, apparently she was really eager to learn more about biblical cosmology flat earth. So I gave her this card. She screamed. And it's got the information on the back, so she's going to give that to her husband. And I'm praying he doesn't come around to sort me out. 
and I told her that I will hopefully be doing a conference in the local area. And she's thinking of moving to Reykjavik. Um, the local area here where I live in uh, April 2020 probably. And she was like, hey, I would love to come to huh? that. So please let me know. So I just told her, you know, stay connected with me on social media. You smooth operator, Nathan. Because I gave her the card. And uh, anyways, it was just really neat. And all it took was... A lack of understanding of reality, a belief in a supernatural, and a dumbass t-shirt. Sharing my shirt. That's all it was. I'm just wearing my shirt. Well, if you were just wearing your shirt, I'm surprised you weren't arrested for exposure. And it triggered the conversation. And the dispatch of several mental health workers, I shouldn't warrant. And of course, I was able to explain to them... That I am allowed out on Tuesdays, and I gave them the phone number so someone could come and collect me. How important it is that if, if God is going to, uh, let's see here. Um, Fill you with his words so you know what to say. So it looks like people are saying that it's choppy. Huh, if it's choppy, I'm not sure why. Sorry about that. That's weird. And it's not the only thing. Hmm. Well, sorry about that. Nathan, there's no need to apologise. We all have our issues. That stinks. I know. Maybe it's your upbringing, though. I'll try to carry this on. Hopefully it's not too choppy. Others can hopefully pick it up and watch it later. When they have some face palm protection ready, perhaps. Um... So, uh, anyways, um, where, where was I, what was I saying? So, yeah, um, so yeah, it was good. It was good to be able to... Talk my way out of getting arrested again. To talk to them about Jesus being uh, Lord, God, Creator, and Savior. Oh no, Nathan, there you go again. And that's why this whole topic matters. Not because the earth being flat is of truly any consequence in and of itself, but if the Creator cannot explain His creation correctly in His, in his inspired words through other men, the prophets and apostles, if He can't do that, then is He truly the Creator? Or are we all just jerking off? Is He Lord? Is He Savior? Is He the flying spaghetti monster? But in fact, I do believe that scientifically speaking, it is all accurate, every word in the Bible. Oh no, that pesky internet. What are we going to do? So, um, that's why it's important to understand the science and how it connects to uh, biblical cosmology. Well, I failed to see how the Bible, when it says it was created in seven days, around 4,000 years ago, corresponds with being able to see stars and galaxies billions of years old so anyways thank you guys for tuning in god bless you in jesus name peace and in the flung spaghetti monster's name i pray that his noodly appendage will touch you well that's it for today i hope you all enjoyed it and just to be clear i have no problem at all with people having religions i do have a problem with people trying to shove them down your throat so this was a bit different a mixture of creatard and flatard. A creafle. A, a flat. Whatever. Anyway, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Just click the little ball down in the corner. And I hope to see you all again. Until next time, Mr. Sensible says, stay sensible. Shut up and sit down. Shut up and sit down.